Well, I think we have one half of that duo there. Do we? Is Catherine with us? Well, well, KB? yeah, I no. think she is. I think yeah, she I can is. see her. Yes, yeah, I, think she I can is. see her. I and I'm see. Gonna just trying her. to make her uh, active. Yeah, there she is. Uh, there oh, she's, she's in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're showing off the. Uh, you're, you're trying to show off the Midlands weather, but it's no better than it is down here. So you can't can't gain any brownie points for that. But listen, thank Catherine. Thank you very much for. Uh, being part of this. Uh, I realise you've had a very busy day. Are you all right? Have you kind of got your composure now? I have indeed, yeah. I've had a bit of a flap this afternoon, so I'm not used to being back home. There's too much to do. <laughs> I mean, you, you, I, that must be the sort of big challenge of, of international cricketers at the moment. It's just time on the road all the time. You're living out of your car, are you, I suppose? Yeah, I've actually not unpacked from England tour yet. Um, I only just finished about four loads of washing because the washing on tour is dreadful. So you kind of save up all your nice clothes. Um, you know, yeah. you know where you've got it wrong. You know where you've got it wrong is you've married a, a teammate, so your your, your washing is doubled. <laughs> Instead of having one person at home, whether it's a man or a woman, who can help with that. <laughs> it is true. I've um, doubled up on um, kit as well. Stash. I've got so there's so much rubbish in the house in terms of kit bags and different like um scorchers melbourne stars the you know 100 teams all that there's so much stuff we need to get rid of it somehow oh and you've only got a couple of days and then you'll be back on the road again i suppose when's your first game for um trent rockets well we met oh. up today for the first day it's like a team building day lots of meetings and things like that and then um tomorrow's first training and then Wednesday's our first warm-up game against the Phoenix. Right. So, so um, sorry, come on. I, I just, just to say, this, this is, by the way, just in case you, you, you're unaware, this is a club we've been running every week. It's in aid of the Professional Cricketers Trust. So all the members on this club pay a small subscription into the Professional Cricketers Trust charity. And we've had a lot of, you know, really interesting characters on, talking about um, their, their careers and, you know, their hopes and so on. And, you know, why I was kind of, I was quite keen to have you on was because, you know, A, you're an iconic player in the women's game. And also you're evolving all the time, I think, uh, as a bowler and a batsman. And then, of course, you're also involved in the 100. And so this, this evening is really a sort of combination of looking at players' careers and also uh, what they think about the 100 and how it can be successful and what success is measured by, I suppose. So, uh, so that's our sort of theme for tonight. And, and, and just thank you everyone for joining as usual. Um, I hope you'll enjoy a sort of slightly different angle on cricket because I probably imagine that quite a lot of you are slightly negative to the 100. These are a lot of quite traditional cricket fans, some not, but there are some old traditional fans in this club that are probably quite anti the 100. I, I'm, pro, I'm pro personally. Um, Catherine, what, what did you think about it when you heard about it originally? You're on mute now. Yeah. I'm used to having to mute myself when people are talking. <laughs> um, uh, I guess I was like everyone else, to be honest. I was a bit sceptical to sort of growing and evolving the game because I guess we all like it as it is. Um, and obviously, the shorter the format it gets, the more chaotic, the less kind of life cricket it becomes because obviously, if we're talking about test cricket being the purest form then it's, you know, it's nowhere near that kind of game. So, um, yeah, it's, I was kind of sceptical, but now I'm excited because it's, because I've played cricket for so long at this level, it's nice to sort of be refreshed, especially at my age, by something a bit different, a bit new, a bit exciting. And um, also, body-wise, it'll be nice to have something <laughs> done and dusted in a couple of hours. <laughs> 
you hope, although the, the, short, the stories of the women's practice games was that they were lasting over three hours. Well, we'll see about that because apparently, well, for a fact, you can get say goodbye to a fielder in the last five overs, can't you, if you, if you run over. So I'm not sure I'll be doing that. <laughs> God, imagine. That, the bowl, that's going to cause a lot of anxiety amongst bowlers running back to their mark again. They should go back to the old days when we had, in the Sunday league, when I, when I used to play, we used to bowl for a 15-yard run. And that was the longest you could run. So that, that got the overs in. <laughs> anyway, so, so that's one new rule. Um, what, what are the others that, that are people are sort of grappling with, do you think? I mean, what are the ones that, that you're sort of not quite sure about? The idea of a 10-ball over, for instance, a 10-ball spell? I think uh, in this weather at the minute, a 10 ball spell is not um, something I would <laughs> like to be doing. Um, you can probably think the batsmen are going to be cashing in on your seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth balls when you're blowing a bit. But um, there are some challenges, obviously, because um, people are going to play slightly different. So you can obviously prepare to how people are going to play. But it, with it being even shorter, people are probably going to be even more aggressive than that's. You know, I think it's the chaos that we're going to be worried about, getting it wrong, um, flapping around and not quite knowing how to, like, bring yourself back. There's a lot of youngsters in this tournament and there'll be a lot of in inexperience. So um, I think our jobs will be to sort of uh, coach them and calm them through certain situations that will be, you know, heightened by being on TV, being in the media, being at on first class grounds, you know, it'll be quite, it's overwhelming as it is. And then to add, you know, the pressure of what this, the pace of this game is going to be like, it's going to be crazy. So, yeah. I mean, one thing about it, Catherine, is you haven't actually had that much time to prepare, really. I mean, people are going from international cricket, uh, both, you know, both the women's and the men straight into the hundred because the, because the, there isn't that much time in the calendar, really. It's all got to be s squeezed in. I mean, it, it, it's interesting how you talk there. It, it does seem as if, is going to be you're almost going to be learning on the job <laughs> definitely I've said that line a few times to be honest I've I've witnessed and not been a part of one practice warm um, uh, 100 game and that didn't go great there was like I said that, that overran a lot a lot of people didn't do things that looking back at the game they would have done differently um, so I think this one and only practice game on the day after tomorrow is you will be hugely important to how the rest of your season goes so yeah it'll be interesting but I think that'll be the main message for the public is just be patient and let it evolve because it is it is untested I mean it's obviously not a whole lot different from a t20 but it, it is if you think about it and we're talking small margins and they're they're the biggest can have the biggest impact so yeah one of the things I'm interested in is is what do you think success will look like or, or failure? What, what what will success look like for the hundred for both for both the women and the men? Do you think? Um, I think personally, it'll be so how these youngsters and these fresh new cricketers come in and how they conduct themselves and how they um, you know play and and adapt to these kind of situations if they can handle this tournament they can handle playing for England you know what I mean and that'll be interesting to see the next generation how they flourish and how they go about it um, and then the next bit will be how it's um, you know taken by the public whether people enjoy it and whether they prefer this and whether this becomes more of a you know a, a, a bigger thing um, and we play more tournaments like this and all around the world so yeah it'll be interesting to see what what comes from it but I imagine that's what they want and that's what success will look like in terms of our future cricketers for England and the future of cricket in general. It feels like a sort of exploration actually which I always thought T20 was a bit as well it's it's creating opportunities not only in this case to play a slightly different style of or slightly different format with, with one or two little twink, tweaks but also rebranding the game and you know sort of trying to create extra bits to it and using the game as a sort of vehicle to create an entertainment really which I know T20 does but 
there are limitations because of the sort of traditional structure and format and the kind of the accessories with it. Whereas this feels like it's been an opportunity to experiment with the coverage, which I hope will be really you know interesting, and these avatars and things like that 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 kind of just uses cricket as a vehicle to use technology and bring perhaps cricket and gaming almost closer together, which I, I should think will sort of fill people, some of the people in this club with horror. But I think you have to keep innovating to, you know, to stay relevant, really, in, in the modern world. Mm, yeah, like, it is crazy at the pace at which social media is, is working. Like, the, the fact that people are earning ridiculous amounts of money just by taking selfies and 10 second mm. videos of ridiculous mm. thing is strange and mind blowing. But, and obviously with COVID adding to the fact that this is now normal life, we're not in studios, we're not, you know, meeting and greeting, we are talking <laughs> over our phones, our laptops. And, and so like, we have to evolve, like you said, and, and in the last year, I think the rate of evolving has been huge, hasn't it? And so, we have to move with it and it has to start at some point. I think this journey to this hundred has been, you know, three to four years in the making. So it's actually been going on longer than we, we all thought. And now, now that it's here, we have to sort of embrace it and, and go with it as much as some people don't want to. Um, this could literally be the future of our game. So. Yeah, well, here you are in your, in your Trent Rockets kit. What, what, what was that all about? I don't Nothing want another over. Away from me. I, don't want, I don't want another ball. I don't want to bowl another five balls, cap, Captain. I've literally got three Harley Davidsons out of nowhere just pull up on my street and they're making a lot of noise. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> um, that means I'm sick of you taking pictures of me. Can you just stop? <laughs> Well, it's not going to stop anytime soon, especially, you know, the thing is, you're so expressive on the field. So I'm afraid the camera's going to follow you until you die. Yeah. You do, like, you, they don't, they're the pictures that you don't consent to. They're like, they just keep rolling no matter what you're doing. And then you see these horrific pictures go on social media. <laughs> well, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> it's not right. How well do you know all your teammates? I mean, do you know them? Do you know all of them well? Or you, uh, this, well, I mean, you look at them, you think, who are you? I don't even know who you are. <laughs> uh, so it's funny one, actually. Like, um, like I know of most of them, but I, I literally, there was four people today, I don't have a clue who they were. And then um, half the coaching staff, I didn't know uh, or seen or heard of them before either. So, it is a difficult one, obviously. Day like it's my first training session tomorrow, and then the games the day after that. So it's real quick introductions and learnings, um, and that's why I think today was went on so long was because we tried to do some team building and some getting to know each other and things like that. There's, like I've played against Rachel Priest, who plays for New Zealand, for mm. over over a decade, but I've mm. never had a conversation with her. Really? So. Yeah, so, I mean, there's lots of people around the world internationally that I have done that with, um, but it's generally the players that you play on the same team with. So I've been lucky to play alongside Meg Lanning. Um, I can't even remember, uh, Elise Villani, people like that. So, you know, you, you get to know them by playing on the same team because you don't really have a choice, especially when they are captain. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've literally never spoken more than two words to Rachel in my life so it was really good to meet her today properly and actually get to see a different side to her because she's just as mental as me on the pitch but actually off it she's soft as a brush so it's, <laughs> it's quite nice. I, I wonder if you think one of the biggest pluses of the 100 I know and I know there's there, I know there's opposition out there but for the, it seems to me for the women's game it Am I, am I right in thinking it's huge for the women's game that that in a, in a way that that might be what that might be one of the sort of big beneficiaries or or is that wrong to think that what to me 
to meet new people. From... Well, no, no, no. I, I think in terms. I'm thinking just in terms of you know the the, the exposure for, for mm. the women's game and the the, yeah. the, the the glare, if you like. That it, it will. It's never perhaps. And the that. equality, the equality as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, like I said, I think that this is one of the best tournaments in terms of a stepping stone for a youngster coming through because. You, they can't they can't hide at all they will be on show mm. um and that means that everybody that needs to see them will see them um whereas sometimes you can go from just one one scout's opinion of one or two games which just isn't you know it's not it's not the best thing to do so you get to watch a certain player eight games in a row and you've got footage and you can go through this footage you can see how they'll go about their business and how they cope with things and like it's just really great for stuff like that the amount of exposure for that player is huge and, and it's just about taking your opportunity into it and that's like the men have a lot of platforms for that type of thing but this for the, especially for the women this is you know huge for for that level of it and then internationally like the kiwi players for instance they could play a lot of the girls go around the world playing i don't know big bash um, our Kia Super League or now the 100 um, the IPL uh, the women's you know the small version of the IPL they go around playing these tournaments because they earn more money doing that than they do playing for their country full time and not by a long not by a small way by a long way so it's it is really important for us to have these platforms for girls to have around the world to have a career and, and have you know some stability and a means to grow that way as well um so that's why you will be seeing the best players from around the world coming and playing in these tournaments on a regular basis now because of that that reason what, what about the financial side of it I, i've looked at the you know we saw the figures uh, the other day in terms of the the amount women are being played and the amount the men are going to be paid uh, do you think do you, are, are you expecting over time that, that women will be paid much more um, yeah, I, I am actually because, like you said, we're playing the same at the same venues on the same day. Um, so I imagine the crowds will, will watch both the games and, and stay and uh, things like that. The entertainment that we will supply will be, you know, like we, we there's no more people coming to perform at these. You know, there's some big acts coming to perform that people will want to be there. Um, and then we're all, you know, we're all under the same banner. We all do the same training. We all play the same amount of games in the same amount of time um, for the same amount of effort. So why not? What, do you know what I mean? Normally, if this was a standalone game and we got 20 people in the crowd, then it's like, oh, fair enough. Yeah, like we don't bring in any money. But I think with this tournament and the way it's been done, we are kind of on an equal playing field in terms mm. of that. Why can't the salary be... <sighs> In my opinion, the gap should be a hell of a lot smaller because there isn't the the reason for that gap. In my opinion, isn't good enough. Uh, but that's just me. I'm 36 and I tend to speak out at my age because I've been through it all and you know been there, done that, and like to see things move on um, quicker because it, there's no reason it can't. But yes, I definitely would like to see that, and I think it will happen very quickly. Um, and hopefully you, yeah, the next couple of years it'll be there and thereabouts. Have you played on um, many of the northern grounds much? Because funnily enough, Kate Cross has just written a piece for the Cricketer Mag, which is coming out in a couple of days' time, saying that there'd be no women's internationals, or very few women's internationals at Headingley or Old Trafford or I think Durham. Um, I, I seem to remember there was one. But anyway, um, she was sort of saying that the northern half of the country hasn't really captured or bought into the women's game it's certainly at this level international stroke the 100 level as much as it will do in this competition so there's a sort of opportunity to to spread the women's game further north in a way and get get the kind of interest going yeah it's rubbish it's rubbish isn't it like it, it infuriates me like in the last 20 something years that i've played for yorkshire only ever played for yorkshire um yorkshire through and through i'm like proud as punished to be where I'm from and who I am and the fact that I can walk into Headingley Stadium and, and not know um, anything to do with that club or its history is 
you know, in my opinion, it's disgusting. It's rubbish. Like, that should just not happen. But it is, and it does, and it's 2021, and it's still happening. Um, and I think in the last year, with the RHF trophy, it's actually starting to happen. Like, we've just, we've just got our new kit with the Northern Diamonds, and the stuff is brilliant. Great kit. And we don't have to pay for it. It's like, whoa, <laughs> we don't have to pay for my own kit. It's brilliant. Um, but the fact that there's not, but if you think, if you look at the stats, I think to do with uh, where people are from in terms of female cricket participation, they're not from the North and there's no one coming through. And that's because they've got nothing to aspire to locally. Like the, because we don't play any cricket there, they can't beg their parents to take them to a game. Like my family don't even come watch me play because I barely play further north than Worcester. They, 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 the furthest they'll go is Worcester. And if I don't play there, I can just kiss goodbye any support. So, um, yeah, it's I'm busy, always it? in here. It is, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's terrible because there's some brilliant venues. I've played at Durham once in 17 years and I've played at Headingley for England, I think, once, probably maximum twice. For England so it's um it's beyond me I don't understand it I'd, I'd like to know the actual reasons and not the I'm trying not to swear um <laughs> you can swear if you like the bullshit <laughs> that you fed um as to why it, it would be lovely to know and for people to be held accountable that would be nice too I've played an international game of cricket at Shaw Lane my home club in Barnsley that's mental. That is mental. But I made it happen. I don't know how I made it happen. Well, your club will be pleased, I suppose. Yeah, they were. That was back in 2008 against New Zealand. It's actually, if you look, think about it and look back at it, it's actually ridiculous. <laughs> but it happened. You know, I tell you what, you can tell why you're such a successful cricketer. Because your passion is so powerful. So everything you do is driven by that sort of emotion. Um, that's, that's what makes you such a compelling and... Uh, strong cricket and, and gives you such longevity it's really uh, stimulating it's inspiring I bet you 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 inspire everybody in your team yeah I, I I think yeah it's like I don't think love or hate it's like because I'm so expressionate and passionate about what I do I can be perceived in the wrong light if you don't know me um everything I do generally on the field is is kind of a uh, self like what are you doing why did you do that but it looks like I'm being horrible to other people or to the batsman it's not it's like self like come on you can do this you gotta be better but it it always comes across in the in the wrong like off the field I'll do anything for anyone I'm, I'm a very loyal person and, and and giving and sometimes it gets lost in translation on a picture just look like an angry psychopath but um <laughs> but yeah I mean well yeah thanks for what you said like yeah, that's how I want to be perceived I am passionate about what I do I do love what I do um, and I'm not afraid to say what I need to say when I need to say it I think it's important we need, we need a whole hour with you but um, we'll have to let you go <laughs> shortly um, so um, Norm, so we got some, some questions from Kat, for Catherine uh, oh that, yeah we do we, can... we do and I'm going to bring one in I'm going to bring one so we'll, 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 we'll give them a, a, bit, a bit of our audience a bit of a chance to, to ask you a couple of things Catherine okay yeah We're, they're mostly regulars and they're mostly very sensible mostly unlike okay. Jack and <laughs> I think <laughs> I'll also say I will also say like we took the gamble earlier when it said uh, Nat's iPhone uh, Chris, Chris's iPhone has appeared as well, and so we'll try and bring that in. But it's now just okay. but never mind. Anyway, this is Jack. Goodbye. Hey, Catherine. Thanks so much for speaking tonight. Um, you have sort of touched on a few, a few of these things before, but I, I just wanted to ask you a question. If you were to compare someone starting their career now and playing for England women like Sophia Dunkley, how yeah. does it contrast with like when you were starting? Like you said, you've played for 20 odd years and like you've played um at your local cr cricket club like in england international match like what's the difference between what maybe dunks is going through now compared to what you did um i mean that's quite a broad question because i'm thinking of it in lots of different ways in my head right now like mm -hmm. financially yeah. emotionally 
um, progress. So I could just touch briefly on each one. Financially, I that, yeah, financially, I was uh, playing for pretty much expenses. So I was playing cricket free of charge for my country. So I was getting my kit for free, I guess. Um, although at that time I had discount cricket equipment and then the money I got from the ECB was like fuel expenses, stuff like that. Um, and I had three jobs on the side because I was, I'm very ambitious. So I, I had big plans for myself and I wanted to buy my own house at a very young age. So I, I had three jobs as well as playing for England so I could get to that point. Obviously now Sophia with her England contract doesn't have to worry about that. Um, not for a very long time. Or, I mean, I encourage absolutely every cricketer there is to have a side passion and prepare for the future. Uh, from from year from contract year one, I would advise that. Um, but that's the difference, I guess, financially. Um, emotionally, I'd say it's a lot harder now because back then, like I said, if you're playing for free you're playing for the absolute, just pure love of the game and nothing more, pretty much. So we were, it was just all about, you know, passion, fight, spirit, all that. And, and you were doing it as a pure hobby and, and there wasn't any, like, expectation or pressure from the outside world. You know, there wasn't much media at all. We were playing at empty grounds. Like, it was easier emotionally, I guess. And then... Um, cricket wise it was sort of the skill of it there was less skill back then because obviously the coaching wasn't as good um cricket hadn't moved on as much people were obviously hitting only certain areas or going at a certain rate so it was quite it was much more simple not easy to play at all <laughs> not at all because mm. we used to go to some dust bowls in india don't get me wrong but like it was it was just simpler like play one way whereas now you got to play three ways like um and be and be multi-skilled so yeah I guess that's the chalk and cheese of it um obviously I've been through every stage um and I guess that's why I'm fine I'm still going because every year it's more of a challenge and I'm like well I can do this yeah. <laughs> I'll give it one more go but yeah that's that would be the change I would say between an old and a new one coming in yeah, an extra format. Um, Jack, Jack, thanks for your question. We'll we'll, we'll yeah. move on actually. Sorry, because I think Kaz has got to go soon. And, and Chris, CJ, you've joined us. Thank, thanks so much for for joining. Chris Jordan, round of applause, everybody, for the man who um, is going to be leading the Southern Braves attack. I guess. I mean, Chris, we're just talking about um, you know the the, the hundred. We, we've had a general conversation about the the goods and the bads. We'll let you have your say. Well, there's no bads particularly anyway, but. Um, we'll let you have your say in a bit, but um, Catherine's got to go shortly. Have you two met? And um, have you two? I, one thing I was wondering. Actually, was, <laughs> one thing I was wondering was um, that I noticed Catherine, your back of the hander, you know, that you're producing, which is yeah. this man. This man has been a pioneer of that. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I'm not so <laughs> no, I'm not so certain a pioneer, but. Yeah, try try my best at it. <laughs> I mean, you you could definitely share tricks. I, I mean, I because you've got another ball, which I know Jofra. I mean, we'll talk about this in a bit more detail in, in a minute. But yeah. you you've got another ball which you sort of you sort of almost sort of squeeze out and it sort of floats out, but it doesn't look different from a distance. What is that? Yeah, it's um, it's so it's like a deep in the hand slow ball. Um, obviously, I just make the grip a lot tighter, grip the ball like really, really deep. Um, so the reason for gripping it deep is so you can just sort of keep your arm speed. Um, Cause that's where the disguise, that's where the deception comes in. And it sort of comes out with a, the same exact seam as like my quicker ball. So through the air, um, you can sort of create the illusion that's still a quicker ball. And yeah, sort of try and deceive batsmen that way. <laughs> Have you got any tried that one yet, Catherine? Um, I have, but the difference between me and Chris is that I reckon he has, I have three hands to his one. <laughs> so when you, when I push the ball deep in my hand, it's already quite far back anyway, because otherwise I would launch it out of my hand. 
I used to play men's. I used to play men's cricket, obviously, with my brother, and I used to have to hold it with four fingers. So obviously, normally you wouldn't get three, and I used to have to hold it with four because it's like a bloody cannonball. It was so. <laughs> hard. Don't you? I mean, the girls play with a slightly smaller ball, though, don't they? Yeah, slightly. <laughs> it's not much different. Really? Should it be? Do you think it should be a bit smaller? But women are getting bigger. I mean. You know, so I yeah. go to my local gym, there's, but most of the women are bigger than me. So what I'd, I'd say is I don't agree with it being lighter. I don't think it needs to be lighter at all. Mm, uh, it should right. be the same weight, but just smaller than it is because you know as well as I do, the batsmen have so much advantage, like it's unreal. And if we're not bowling, we're bowling another 15, 20 clicks less than the boys. Like either we, what I thought would have been a better idea back in the day would make the pitch size shorter by... I don't know. Just even two would be great. I mean, because vis visually, you're not seeing anything different. You think it's the same, but what you then happens on the pitch is that the ball comes through quicker, there's more bounce. Like, it just looks better in terms of that. Um, so I, I don't know why they haven't thought about these changes before, but yeah. Um, mm. And playing with the Kookaburra ball in test matches is just the worst thing on earth. It's like you rock up and you're like, oh, this is going to be another shit day for me. Like, <laughs> can we have can we have a jukes ball, please? <laughs> yeah, I, I share that. I share that. And so that's absolutely right. Let, let's have let's have another question because I know you Kelly, you've got to go in a bit. So just very, have, um, just very quickly, I was, I've got to go yeah. as well. So oh, you've nothing, got to go. Nothing personal. Well, you, are, well, you you ask one more question, Simon. Then yeah, uh, of Catherine or Chris? Uh, Chris. Um, well, I, I, one thing we were talking about right at the start of the show, Chris, was just how I mean, incredible that atmosphere was over over well fr Friday night and uh, yesterday at Headingley. I mean, it was it was fantastic, thrilling cricket. Um, what what was it like to be involved in it? Yeah, exactly that. Um, having not played in front of crowds for quite some time, um, I think we, we had a couple of games in India at Ahmedabad at that big stadium as well, yeah. where it was about 60,000, 70,000, that, that was quite low as well because the noise doesn't get up, but um, having our own fans um, sort of back in the stadium and um, watching the game unfold and, and also they, they were able to watch two very, very good games, two high scoring games. So plenty of entertainment, action pack, wickets, runs, everything. So all those ingredients combined really made for good viewing and uh, made the atmosphere even more electric, you know. And uh, I don't see it being, I think it'll probably be as low as probably tomorrow night in Manchester, you know. Um, obviously, uh, Pakistan actually have quite a, quite a big following in, in England as it is. And I remember playing there last time, it actually felt a little bit like an away game. Yeah. So I don't know. It'll be it'll be um it'll be very very noisy tomorrow night as well. But now the atmosphere has been absolutely electric, and yeah, credit to the fans for sure. Well, it was it was a it was a brilliant weekend. I, ho I hope it goes well um, on Tuesday. I have actually got to go. on My daughter's sport um, calls on a Monday night. Um, so enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Chris, for joining us. And I know um, Yoz is going to continue with you with the members talking about uh, the hundred, which is coming up. So all the best. Cheers, 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 um, or is or is dinner calling? She wants, wants to enjoy the, the, the set, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, no. So we've got any? Um, have we got another question for Catherine? We have. Yeah, Rob's. In. Good. Cool. Good evening, Catherine. Hi, how you doing? Good evening. Hi. So just a quick one, really. Um, I've got a question for you both, but obviously I'll start with Catherine first, in case she has to go and do whatever she needs to do. Um, got to do her laundry. <laughs> oh, well, that's very important then. Yes, we can't have that. Um, when the England ladies had a change of you know, structure and, you know, manager and coach, etc. What, what, what were the main sort of changes in shift? Because, you know, was there sort of a shift to, you know, we, you know, want to concentrate more on you know, T20 or the test or, you know, or was it just a sort of, you know, combination of, you know, let's try and reach best we can be in all three or was there any particular sort of, you know, um, sort of some sort of line that they, you know, like, well, like with the England men, they focused on, you know, on the, you know, winning the World Cup. So that's their one day focus for four years. And, you know, the sort of tests sort of yeah. took a back step. But was it the same with the ladies when the change took over? Or was it just, you know, this is 
what we aim to be, like the number one team in the world? Um, I think, I feel like the focus never changes. We never, as in, in terms of the end goal, um, yeah. but in terms of red ball, white ball cricket, we never concentrate on red ball cricket up until the point where it's absolutely necessary. Um, it's always in the back of your mind, I guess, when, when your next test match is, but it's so far away that we have a, a hell of a lot of, 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 of concentration on white ball cricket. Um, so I think naturally, obviously, if, if you're playing your best T20 cricket and you you can transfer that into one day cricket um, and just do it for longer, basically, obviously. Um, there's never so then the end goal is obviously it's always every new coach that comes in has got the 50 over World Cup. That's that's like their their pinnacle. Okay. Um, and everything that happens in between is a stepping stone to that. Um, when Mark Robinson came in, he had a massive focus on that um, 50 over World Cup. And although like we were <laughs> we worked really really hard and did more than we'd ever done before. Um, we did win the World Cup, but we were mentally absolutely gone, like drained as hell. Uh, I guess the way in which we got there was not something that was sustainable. <laughs> we couldn't carry on that way. And that's when the change of management came in with Lisa. Um, but it wasn't too far from the norm because we'd Lisa had done the England Academy prior to that. And so people knew her. Um, and so relationships were easily built. But yeah, I'd say her main focus is that 50 over World Cup and, and being the best in the world but obviously Australia are very big and I guess that we saw having an Aussie over as our coach as a bit of an insight into you know how we will go about you know beating them and doing that I mean, so just because she is an Aussie coach has she brought over some of their you know sort of their sort of their way of thinking sort of thing you know their sort of you know way you prepare for matches maybe slightly different how it was before yeah I mean she's worked with the Australian team and she's worked in the Big Bash since it was started um, quite closely with the men as well um, I've played on her Big Bash team in Australia three, the first three years it was on um, and so she has a hell of a lot of insight with those international players not so much their coaching staff but certainly their players and, and they would obviously feed back their values and what they do and how they go about it um, so yeah she's been really valuable for that um, but it, yeah like it, it's all about the support staff you bring in too obviously she's the big overseer but the support staff you bring in um, are the behind the scenes obviously doing all the one-to-one -one daily grind with you all um, and helping you met, become that better player so that's been great the people that she's brought in um, and we're just we're just actually taking on a new batting coach, which we're really excited about because we never really had that you know selfish batting coach to you know get stuck in with the batters. Uh, it's been a while since we had that, so it's good. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good. You know, yeah. you sort of need that little bit of a you know, it's all the area sort of ticked off, isn't it? That you know. You yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, listen, Catherine and Rob, thanks for that. Um, Catherine, thank you very much for speaking with the same passion that you play with and, uh, and giving us loads of really interesting insights. And, you know, really good luck with it. And um, I will be following you, obviously. And I, I think it's it's a real kind of pivotal moment for the women's game, actually. So, um, so very good luck and um, give all your teammates uh, lots of encouragement. Don't, don't shout at them if they miss field off you. You know, I was going to bring that out tomorrow at training. I was going to let them all know. Don't panic. Well, I heard you. I heard you in that last <laughs> game when someone missed. I think it was Sophie Eccleston dived over one. And you went, oh! And you, I think you let out. A no, bit it was actually, speaking. if you listen closely, it's her. Um, oh, is it? Turn the mic down because it's a bit of an expletive. But she, she's handing out sprays these days as well now, anyway. So. Is she? Is she now? She's fine. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, there we well, it shows she cares. That's that's good. Yeah. Um, anyway, best of luck and uh, get get to the get to the laundry. Otherwise, Nat <laughs> might be on your back. <laughs> All right, cool. See ya. Good luck, thanks, Chris. You, thanks, See thanks you, a lot. Good luck, Thank good you luck. so much. Yeah. Cheers. See you later. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. So, so Chris, sorry to um sort of hold you up there. Um, it was just difficult kind of getting the timing right. Um, you, how are you feeling about everything? I mean, you. you You've got back into the ODI side. 
um, you, you're obviously, um, you know, very much a, a key part of that group. Um, you know, how are you feeling? How are you feeling it's going? Yeah, I think it's going pretty good. Um, I'm actually not quite back into the audio setup as yet. Um, that's simply um, from the point of view of, because um, I had surgery um, about a year ago and actually uh, hit me the other day. It's been exactly a year on my arm because I have sort of like a, a bicep condition. You can probably see in the camera how one's extremely bigger than the other. Um, so I had this condition on my right arm that's, that was ongoing. So I had a bit of surgery on that. But it's a sort of um, um, I'm managing through till I get back to a stage where uh, I feel that I can then uh, push to 10 overs and push back into four-day cricket as well. Um, but in general, um, yeah, I've been really enjoying um, being a part of the team, a part of the team's development. Um, and yeah, the, the direction that, that we're definitely heading in, um, which is just almost going from strength to strength for really, and, and almost trying to maintain while still improving um, the sort of status uh, that we have as a, as a white ball side, which I think is, is very, very important because we went through so much. Um, uh, we went through such a long period of time um, trying to organize a, a style of, a cricket that we want to play and yeah. uh, attacking brand, always taking the positive option. These are sort of words we sort of use. Um, uh, but to sustain that that level for so long, um, yeah, it's been obviously pretty pretty proud to uh, having played a part in it. And um, do you feel that you can still, as a team, can you still evolve? Because you're playing such exceptional cricket. And I know that, you know, it's one all in this T20 series, but the one, the one day 50 over side, even the second and third 11 pumped um, the, the Pakistan is 3-0. And there just seems to be so much talent. You kind of think, how can they get any better? How can they get better? Well, it's, it's exactly that. I think I think you almost, um, in a way, start judging getting better by actually how long you, you can sustain um, that status, really. Um, so, and actually seeing watching the guys come in and and the manner in which they played was obviously uh, so so great and so awesome to watch. Um, and yeah, it was actually uh, pretty proud. Um, I've got obviously a couple of, of mates who actually got the call up and stuff at Phil Saw, et cetera, to watch them go in and, and, and sort of carry on what what that team, um, what this team is all about. Um, really, really spoke volumes for one the next group coming through, but also the information that's filtering right the way through the county game um, in terms of how we want to go about playing our cricket, the intensity we want to play at and what's not. So I actually think that 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 in itself can be an improvement actually trying to um, like sustain that, that level for as long as possible for many years to come, you know? Yeah. I mean you, you talk about intensity and, and you play that that you know that, that with great intensity and yet you when you're in those critical moments, both bowling and fielding, and even batting, you look so cool. And, and you, you look as if, you know, you're very composed and calm. How do you maintain that in the heat of a, a tense situation? How do you look so cool? Do you work on that? Do you have, is it just built into you or is it something you've kind of developed? Um. I think it's definitely a part of uh, my makeup uh, as a person anyway, but um, I've had to sort of work on it to really tap into it, to, to bring it to the fore, you know, um, certain breathing techniques um, and, and just coming to sort of understand yourself and, and, and actually how you are when you're at your optimum best. Uh, and, and when I'm at my best, um, I'm breathing as regularly as possible, getting good oxygen to my brain because then I, I just tend to make better decisions, period. Um, in, this, in the heat of a moment, in a split second, uh, as long as I'm... So is it, is it a I'm question of standing at the end of your mark and actually, you know, sort of filling your lungs? Or is it well, a bit sort of more subtle than that? Um, it, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more subtle than that. It's sort of ongoing. So it's, it's even in between walls. It's uh, especially especially when it's going into, say, uh, the crunch time in the game when um, everything's on the line. 
it's in between balls and we lead up to that to that moment when I know that right. I have to come on and try and shut down the game for the team, or win the game for the team. Like at, at this stage, you know, um, you got probably got the best hitters in on the opposition, uh, and they're coming hard. Um, and I've got to obviously tap into what my strengths are whilst still assessing conditions to figure out okay, what is actually going to be the hardest thing to to hit on this pitch? Um, because on some days it might be uh, most days it's a yorker because the yorker is a good yorker, but on another day um, it might be a cutters. It might be actually um, still coming hard at the batsman with hard limbs. So. It's, I find that obviously when I control my breathing to, to that point of view, I'm able to just make those assessments um, a lot clearer, a lot more quickly. And, and, um, and yeah, from there, it's just a matter of, of having, having the belief in your own skill because you sort of played over these situations over and over your head um, so many times, you know, and then it's about obviously bringing it to the fore as, as, as best as you possibly can. Is it also about... Um almost convincing yourself that if it doesn't go right, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I remember thinking that, you know, this is, you know, in the dark ages, but I remember thinking, you know, in the last over of a key match, a final or something, thinking to myself, look, if it doesn't go right, it's not, I'm not, it's not life and death, you know, it's just a game and we we all lose, but I hope we don't. Do you ever use that sort of, psychology where it's not going to define your um, career if you lose kind of thing um i think there's a balance to be had with that um i think there is a there is a small place for it but i don't think it's the be all and end all because i think the the mere fact that the stakes are high um and and you, you're willing yourself on you're willing your team on that you really want to do well i think that also brings out that best in that moment okay. for you, like that yeah. desperation, that that um, almost being hungrier for it, you know? Um, so, but there's a, there is a balance to be had in it. Um, and I think if you get that balance right, that's when those situations you can come out on top because just saying, okay, it's not the end of the world, uh, it doesn't, I, I don't think that that's, that's the correct way uh, as well because uh, we play sport for a reason. We play sport to win, and and there should be a, a uh, an element of, of desperation, and uh, and then obviously not in the fullest sense of the word, but in a, in, in the best possible way, and mm. an element of hunger and an element of mm. that desire to to be that person in that moment to, to make it happen for the team, um, and not just um, well, okay, it's okay if it doesn't go right. That's the, the that that is part of it as well because. The reality is it isn't life or death and the sun will come up tomorrow and your family will still <laughs> love you and these kind of things. But as sportsmen, yeah. competitors, I think the balance is actually still being hungry enough and mm. switched on enough um, to tap into your process and all your training to like bring out your best performance in that moment. Mm. No, that's, that's, a, that's a lovely answer. Um, but we're, we're talking about the 100 tonight um, because it's obviously two days to go to it or three days in your case, in the case of the men. Um, it must be hard for you in a way because you've, you've got to think of this T20 international decider tomorrow and then suddenly refocus on, on the 100 a couple of days later. So have you had much chance to think about the 100 from your perspective? Um, yeah, I have, I, have, I have allowed my mind to wander wonder a little bit um, naturally. Um, it's obviously something new, um, something that actually we as, we as professional cricketers in England have been looking forward to for almost many years, you know, having our sort of own franchise tournament. So yeah, I've had, um, I have allowed my mind to wander a little bit, but I'm, I'm very much uh, the type of person to stay in the present as much as possible because like okay, tomorrow is not tomorrow is not even promised, you know. So um, like my focus right here, right now is about um, playing in a big game. I decide that we play it like a final, um, preparing yourself mentally like that, and almost getting in that practice as well, you know, like crunch game, knockout game, whatever the case may be, and play in that in that mode. So all my focus is there right now, um, and and you almost just back in. You sort of experience and your cricket game, the cricket brain, sorry, and stuff that 
okay, when, when we do get into that 100 moment now, like, because at the end of the day, everyone's starting on, on the same, uh, on a level playing field. No one's played it before. Uh, there probably will be some new tactics used and what's not, but who's to say one tactic's right and, and the other one isn't, but because no one's played the format before, you know, so it'll take some time before, like, um, you start to see certain patterns start to shape and stuff. But um, I think the team that sort of believes in in how they saw it and how they see it from the beginning, um, I think we'll, we'll probably go the furthest. Obviously, during the tournament, you you have to make adjustments and what's not. But um, because there's no right or wrong way right now, the team that has the most belief in, in their own planning and their own um, the way they sort of see the games unfolding and stuff and almost like back that 150 percent i feel like those those kind of teams will go, will go quite deep well i think yours yours is certainly one of the favorites uh, looking at that bowling attack it's going to be um pace you know trial by pace for the opposition um very impressive list of fast bowlers if hopefully joffre can play a, a bit of a part um and um devon conway Good, good signing. Yep. So, um, who are you looking forward to playing with that you haven't sort of experienced before? Um, I'm actually looking forward to being on the same side as Quinton the Cough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I can imagine. So, for the first time in my life, um, honestly, he's an awesome player, like so talented. Um, he, he gives us, like, he actually gives us quite a few. Um, headaches whenever we play against him because he hits the ball in some unorthodox areas, you know. And, and well, he uh, hits good, but, he hits hard leg over yeah, six, doesn't he? Yeah, over fine leg and stuff like yeah. that. So, like, um, he's a, he is really a quality player and such a talented guy. Um, and yeah, obviously, I uh, met him quite a bit in passing. We sit and speak a little bit and stuff, but to play with him, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see to see what that's like. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to to playing with a few of the Sussex guys as well. Um, Geoff, uh, George Garton, Tamal Mills, obviously Delray Rollins as well, brings these back. So yeah, we I, I think straight off the bat on paper, we, we do have a good group of uh, guys and, and not just obviously as cricketers, but actually as, as human beings as well. So, and I think that obviously uh, once, we, once we come together and, we, we started to get that team chemistry going quite quickly. I think it'll help that actually quite a few of us play, have played with one another already um, all over, whether it be the franchise stuff or for your counties or for your country, you know, uh, and also played against all of them as well, like Colin McGranholm and uh, Devon Combe, and as I said, Clint, Clinton the Cock as well. So I think that the guys should gel uh, uh, pretty quickly and get that team chemistry going because that's very, very important, especially in franchise cricket, to get that going as quickly as possible more than anything. And sort of on field, on field uh, matters uh, take care of itself. Yeah, that's a really good question, a, a, a point actually, because the on field chemistry, I noticed Gary Kirsten with Welsh Fire is taking the, the team round or has taken the team round the Principality Stadium and up to the Brecon Beacons and tried to get them sort of immersed in Wales um, to try and create that sort of team chemistry. And you, you know, you've played in quite a bit of franchise cricket around the place. What is the best way of, of creating that team spirit of a new team? Is it just a matter of winning or are there kind of other good techniques that you can use? I think winning, I think winning um, is a big part to playing it, um, but it's not the be all and end all. Um, but I think getting an early win under your belt is um, is probably one of the better scenarios, um, just due to the fact that look, it's new coaches, it's new teammates, it's new everything, and in that build up there will be a lot of messages, a lot of ideas and stuff. So to see them sort of put into practice quite early in the tournament and work, it it goes a long way to when you get deep into the tournament because that trust builds actually pretty quickly that, right, the planning that we did, the things that we spoke about actually worked. Um, but on the flip side, well, not on the flip side, in addition to that, um, obviously it's, it's very, very important that um, the 
players themselves are not too closed off because um, it would be quite easy sometimes just to be in your comfort zone. And but is that it, it, but actually being out of your comfort zone, trying to get to to know a teammate that you don't know so well a little bit better in an informal environment, stuff like that. Those type of things go a long way to, towards uh, producing team chemistry because then you can start to, to care a little bit more, especially, and, and, and enjoy your teammate's success genuinely from mm -hmm. a lot earlier. Um, so those type of things, I think, it's a combination of the two um, because, as I said, there'll be a lot of messages, a lot of planning, a lot of um, ideas and stuff. That you that you'll take going into the game, and obviously by winning, you start to see them come into action as quickly as possible. Now, obviously, if you lose, it's not to say right they weren't the right ones, but they're just that little bit more effective uh, by a win. And you've got um, you've got Mahela Guy Wardner as your coach, who has a great um, record in the IPL, of course. Um, what, what 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 does he bring and, and have you worked with him? I played with him and worked with him, yeah. Um, so I played with him at Sussex, I played against him um, on my test debut, these kind of things. Um, and he's a, and, and first and foremost, MJ MJ's a top guy. Um, he's quite compassionate, um, understanding, um, shows a lot of empathy as well, but also uh, uh, demands um, uh, Pretty high standards from from his players, which I think is 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 um, quite a good balance to have. Um, so yeah, um, so experience, so much experience, but so much Test cricket, One Day cricket for Sri Lanka, and then even as a coach, um, as I said, like having been at the IPL to to win that trophy, um, because no one ever goes through a whole IPL season and, and it's plain sailing, you know. Sometimes there are difficult decisions to make um, mid-season, um, rejigging to be done or whatever the case may be. And to come out on top in the end, uh, obviously shows shows good patience, shows uh, good backing, but also shows um, that, that intelligence and that knows to know when things need rejigging and when things just need shuffling around to then go again and stuff like that. So um, mm -hmm. I think, but yeah, those combination of things um, obviously make for, make for um, what, why, he is, why he is such a great coach. Overall, I mean, you, you sound excited by it. Um, I mean, I know it must be hard because you've got to com compartmentalise and think about tomorrow. But, you know, overall, you, you sound excited by the 100 because it's new and, and interesting, I suppose, and challenging. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And yeah, the, the, as I said, like the, the one of the things that I'm most excited about is just to see um, how tactics and stuff unfold. You yeah. know, like that side of the game I'm really into, um, and, and and that side of the game really excites me as well. So uh, it's that prospect of of seeing tactics unfold and different tactics that teams use at different times and. And what's not so, uh, and then also to see obviously all of our um, all of our cricketers like obviously perform at that stage again. It's on the BBC, um, so it'll be expanded to a whole a whole new audience as well. So all these things um, mm. are sort of rolled into one, make make for good ingredients for excitement. <laughs> will, will you bowl? Will you will you volunteer a ten ball death over? Um, I'll do whatever is required. To be honest, um, like who knows? It could be. It could work for you. It could work against you. But um, that and that's just the way. Like these shorter formats go. Uh, I play again. I play like T10 cricket as well. Um, it's just about managing expectations and 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 assessing what is a good day from what is a bad day. Um, and that will vary from surface to surface, conditions to conditions, and. And just how how the games are unfolding at the time. So, but if I need to bowl a ten ball death over, and that's what the team needs me to do. Uh, you, do you sometimes feel that um, stats are unfair? The sort of bowling figures are unfair because they don't tell that you bowled two overs at the start in the power play and two overs at the death. Um, yeah, I think it can. If sometimes if you're not watching the cricket or if you sorry don't 
understanding rhythm of a T20 game, um, yeah, they can be viewed a little bit unfair for sure. Um, and sometimes even like probably even where you're playing your cricket. Um, so it's playing mm. somewhere like New Zealand um, or wherever. And, and actually in England, we have some of the flattest white ball wickets like in the world. Anyone, any cricket bridge. There's some of the flattest, um, yeah. the most easy paced ones, you know. So, but um, it's nothing that is sort of looking too, too deep. Um, but sometimes on the other occasion, man, okay, a bit of analysis is being done. If it's not understood or if those things are not taken into consideration, yeah, it can be a little bit, um, well, I wouldn't say frustrating, but um, yeah, probably unfair a little bit. Yeah. We used to, I, I played in an era when the score, the, the, the bowling figures didn't, didn't go on the scoreboard. And um, so you could get it, you, some days if you've been given a right old panning, the only way the captain knew the bowling figures was when the, the scorer came in with a little slip of paper and he handed in the bowling figures at the end. So it was a, one bowler's task was to try and intercept the scorer before he got to the captain and yeah. hide the bowling figures. But you can't do that anymore. Um, right. Let's, let, if you don't mind, we've just got a few questions from our audience um, just for 10, 10, 15 minutes, if that's all right. Where are you, by the way? Are you in the, you're not in the Lowry, are you? Yeah, I'm in the Lowry. I didn't know they had those beautiful armchairs. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's nice. Quite comfortable, actually. It's nice. Yeah, it looks I smart. Have... You need to knit that. Right, yeah. anyway, um, we've There's got me. Norse. There's Norse me. I'm, bring, question. I'm bringing myself on. That's outrageous, isn't it? Hello, oh, Chris. Thanks for um, being here tonight. Now, before I ask my actual question, I just want... I've got a big pan blowing. It looks like I'm in, a, in an aerodrome or something. Um, just a question. I want you to just... Go, Prove or disprove or confirm or not confirm an internet rumour that you went to school with Rihanna. True or false? <laughs> it's true. There you go. That's all we need to know. It is true. <laughs> and, and maybe Carlos Brathwaite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Carlos. Do that again. So that's yeah. true. Anyway, here's my question, right? I would say, I would say, right, that you are the best catcher of a ball I've ever seen in cricket, right? Me and Tyler, you are Mr. Safe Hands, right? <laughs> now, i got to play cricket on Thursday. i got to play a game. And I always find when I'm in fielding practice and they sort of chuck a few high balls up before you go in the field, nine out, of time, nine out of ten times, I always catch them, right? Always catch them, right? But then when you're on the field in the game and the ball goes up high, my first thought is, oh, shit, why is it coming to me, right? <laughs> right? So you, as the master of catching, how can you help me catch that ball in live play? Because it always feels very, very different to practice. Yeah, it can feel different to practice for sure. But um, I think that the mistake you're making is, is exactly that. So when the ball's going up, if you're thinking, why is it coming to you instead of... So for me, um, when the ball's come to me, I've already played that scenario over in my head like a thousand times, you know? Um, and I'm almost expecting it to come like literally every single ball of the innings. Um, so when I go into a fielding position, for instance, okay, if I went to mid-off, um, Okay, right hand batter's bat, and depending on the batter as well, I, I sort of know where he hits the ball. In about 10 seconds, I'd probably create about eight to nine scenarios in which this ball will come to me. Um, I, I might have to affect a run out, I might have to run over my head to the left, I might have to run over my head to the right, I might have to run in and dive, I might have to go fire and take a flat, hard one. But it's sometimes it's actually quite difficult to explain, but that's the best way I can explain it. I sort of create a about, about eight, eight, seven to eight scenarios in which that ball could come to me um, in a very quick space of time. So I've already played it over my head and I'm just expecting it to come to me like every single ball. So I think the first thing you should do is the same way you practice and you take nine out of 10, you go in the game, like expect, or I just think I'm at practice, you know, like something like that. I'm going to be like a lion in that field on third. The, the yeah. second thing you need, the second thing you need, Rob Whitehouse says, is um, a CJ gold chain. <laughs> and then you say, right, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, God. I mean, you, it's true, though. I mean, your, your fielding is absolutely astonishing. I don't know how you do it. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. Right. The, is that... Hello? We have Paul. Hello, Hello. 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 H
Norts has teed me up very, very nicely there with that, with that question with, with mine. So mine was about fielding as well. Um, I think, yeah, just to echo what, what everyone's just said, I think, you know, you are probably the most naturally gifted fielder in the, in the England setup for sure, certainly for catching. Um, I guess the, the question was uh, around, was in the, in the last sort of 10 or 15 years um, in the game in general, we've obviously seen fielding develop and, you know, the, the, the sort of type of catches that we're seeing across the world is um, you know, become more and more spectacular, more and more regular. And there's, there's a lot of data analysis that obviously goes into the game in terms of bowling and, and batting and in terms of players analysing their own performance and, and looking at opposition players. And it's, it's kind of become quite scientific in that way. Um, so the question was really about whether that sort of level of analysis exists in the fielding side or whether it's still very much sort of gut reaction and, and you know, field placings are down to the captain's gut reaction at the time or how much data analysis and scientific evidence you know, analysis goes into the fielding side compared to the other two two disciplines. Yeah, definitely just equally as much. Um, and actually that's how me feeling at mid-off um, in a T20 game has come about. Um, so obviously uh, in te- when I play test cricket, when I play one day cricket, I'm uh, feeling the slips more often than not, um, pretty much the entire game. As long as there's a slip, I'll, I'll go in there. But um, then in T20 cricket, you sort of move my position away from being in the slips to mid-offs because it, in, especially in the power play, um, it became a real hot spot, um, whether it be trying to affect runouts or because every because in the power play, guys are looking to go down the ground over the bowler's head, over the infield, and um, there's an opportunity to sort of save runs and make wickets um, from that point of view. So through that analysis, I sort of moved my position in T20 cricket from slip to mid-off, um, especially in power play. That's interesting. So, so mid-off is perhaps one of the most important positions in T20 then? Yeah, it is, it's, it's become a very, a very, very important position uh, in T20 cricket. As I said, like, it's, it's actually quite a... a, a uh, all action area because um, the batters are, are, are predominantly trying to clear the infield, um, go down the ground, hit through sort of extra cover, pick gaps that way, and um, and you, you find yourself getting a lot of skim catches and having to probably react and go in and effect effect a run out or balls going over your head, going backwards, stuff like that. So actually, it's become a uh, quite an all-action spot. In so, who, so who would you like to have at mid-off to your bowling if you had the per- in the perfect world? Any you can choose. Oh, any. Uh, who would you have at mid-off? I might take AB. I, I knew you'd say that. Yeah, I knew I've, had you'd say that. I've had AB at mid-off for me as well, like in uh, yeah, in your Cha- challenges. Yeah. Yeah, for RCB. So um, yeah, it's was, it was quite nice. He did, he did get me a couple of kits, few balls going over the top and yeah, stuff like that. So, and he's a yeah, great, he's, and, and actually that, that person at mid-off because um, if you have a good fielder, it, it means that they, they also they also read the game pretty well as well. Um, get a feel for what the batsman is trying to do and it's a good person for the bowler to have there uh, as well. So, it's you, know who, you know who you could have done with in an earlier era the, the mid-off of your dreams would have actually been a man from your island, right. Roland Butcher. Ah. Butch. Butch yeah, was an unbelievable fielder. Yeah. And we called him Hoover, Hoover because yeah. <laughs> he fielded quite often at deep cover. And he, when the ball was hit out to deep cover, he sprinted towards it and picked it up one-handed without slowing down. Really? Amazing. Amazing yeah. fielder. Nice, nice. I'll tell he, you, he's I'll he's, tell he's there. Oh, yeah, tell him, yeah, because he's um he's at the academy now in Barbados, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's doing some work out there. Yeah. And is there anybody? Is, is there a fielder that you were influenced by at all? Um. Well, uh, I used to watch. I actually used to watch Dwayne Smith quite a lot as well. Um, it was early, like when he first um, broke onto the international scene. I think at one point he's probably one of the best viewers in the world, uh, you know. Mm. But um, I, a lot of it, I mean, came about from my own self, really. Like I used to do like a lot of unorthodox catching. Like I used to go go to the beach and, and do a lot of diving in the water, like catching one-handed, these sort of things. Like when I was younger, you know. So it, it's just something that I 
for like 10 minutes, I'd go on the wall and just like do some one-handed stuff, bounce the ball off the wall. Like any opportunity I got, like I just used to catch and catch and catch. So you, you yeah. can't really do that in Brighton, can you? you yeah, can't, not quite, You can't yeah. dive, on, dive off the beach and take a diving catch there because you'll yeah, get a broken elbow um, yeah. or a cut elbow. Uh, yeah. you know, what's it, what's it, that's interesting. Um, uh, Norse, is that it? have we got any more questions? Is that it? Is anybody I else? Could get, I could throw you one more down if you want. Go on then, yeah, yeah. All go right. For it. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's actually the comeback kid, Rob, because he had a question for Catherine. Sorry, sorry if I interrupted had a, you, Rob. That's right. That's and right, he had a question for, uh, for Chris. So well, here we go. Evening, Chris. How you doing? I'm mean, How's it going? Yeah, good. I need one that, well, I've got a little chain, but it's not as big as yours. <laughs> it's not as big um, as Joffrey's. Yeah, yeah. No, no one's as big as Joffrey's chain. Um, mm, yeah. My question was really, it's my too bike lock is My bike lock is, is, is smaller than Joffrey's chain. <laughs> we need you just to be wearing it next time. Next time yours, that'd be quite good. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, out of all the franchises you play in, which one is your favourite and why? And who do you like playing with in, in that franchise the most? Oh. <laughs> oh, on the spot then, no pressure, obviously. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's such it's such a difficult question um, because I've genuinely enjoyed, for, for various reasons at, at different times, playing in every single franchise tournament. I've played franchise, I've played uh, in New Zealand, uh, I've played in, obviously, India, Pakistan, um, the West Indies, uh, I played in Hong Kong, I played, like, so I've played actually quite a bit and in, in every single one I've taken something different to, to obviously take into my game um, to the next yeah. time and I've made some unbelievable friends. Um, so like for instance in Pakistan, like I enjoy um, seeing like some of the raw, um, talented fast bowlers and sort of even picking something from them of what like what sort of characteristics they have. Then in India, you have like some unbelievable batsmen and then let's try to pick up something from that point of view, man. You know, so like from that, uh, uh, there's not one franchise tournament I've played that I've not, I've not enjoyed for one reason or the other, uh, whether it was a real high profile one or not as high profile the one that I just- Well, well if they had to change the rules and say you could only play for one franchise a year, <laughs> <laughs> That's not choosing your favourite. Money, money then, aren't you? The year, yeah. 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 Which one pays the most? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well. Th- that's just that's just that's just being real, to be honest. Like, um, you almost um, sort of look at which one possibly might be the most um, lucrative um, for yourself, and because that's obviously just as part and parcel of, of our game now. Um, and yeah, if I do you tend to look at the teammates in that franchise before you join. So like, you know, there might be one that's not going to pay as much, but you really want to be working um, alongside other players. You sort of... Well, it doesn't always work like that. Um, it, it only works like that on the other occasion where a tournament started already and you sort of coming in possibly as a replacement, but a couple of teams might go as a replacement. So only then you sort of get to choose um, a little bit if you sort of sort of two two or three teams like need you as a replacement and then you might start to look at but okay. look at who you want to play with and so that, that so like for instance like um, I went to play for TKR Trinidad Night Riders um, in the CPL um, which was a brilliant again that was an awesome experience uh, actually I might if, if I don't answer your question I'll probably say that one um, from from the mere point of view that it was sort of in the Caribbean, um, and I got a, 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 and that time I actually got a chance to play with uh, Pollard, uh, Bravo, Narain, all of these guys instead of having to bowl that time. You know, I bet that so, was some. I bet there were some long nights out with that group. But how we, we actually <laughs> didn't go that much, um, to be honest, but. Uh, yeah, we probably had the odd the odd night here and there, but <laughs> it's, honestly, it's great. It's great fun um, to play with them, and 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 not only that, the way in which they play the cricket. Because um, I remember at the time I was saying to myself, like, actually, this is probably where I was meant to be at that particular moment because I was meant to experience why those guys have so many titles, and sort of try to pick the bones out of like what 
what is um, one of the main things as to why they have so many titles, you know. Uh, I think between Poland and Bravo, they have something like 30 T20 titles, you know, which is actually quite a lot. And they, they sort of battle with each other to see who gets the most titles and stuff. But that's why we play sport and, and they do and they do and talk about everything surrounding winning. Um, and if that means like having to pull up a, a, a player straight after a game win, I don't know, in a particular moment, they didn't play the best shot or whatever the case may be, they'll do that there and then. There won't be any um, whispers in the corners, these kind of things. So like, I remember when I experienced that whole scenario, I was like, actually, this is probably, this is actually probably the place that I was meant to be at that particular time. So um, that was, again, a great experience for me. Cool. Right, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> cool, no. thanks, Rob. Okay, well, uh, we must let you go, uh, CJ. Um, yeah. One last question, really. The 100, what do you think will represent success as a tournament? Um, oh, <laughs> that's, another, that's a great question. Um, I think... I mean, you know, is it massive audiences? Is it... Is it is it diverse audiences? Is it younger? You know, yeah, is it I was, the Caribbean I was, community. I was about to go, I was about to exactly go down that line. Um, I was actually going to speak about like because um, I think that with the players that are in it, I think the standard of cricket would be awesome anyway. So I wasn't even going to speak on that. I was more going to speak on yeah the audience and people seeing. Um, so many different people from different backgrounds actually playing this sport again as i said like it's on free to air tv so um you're probably gonna straight away in a snapshot start to see a little a, a, a slightly different audience uh, and who knows you, you you might see a next um world beater um who who would have watched the hundred and and thought that's a sport for me. I definitely want to play that. Um, and I think those type of scenarios is what will represent success for me in this tournament. Two or three uh, in your team are from, you know, the Caribbean connection um, in the Southern Braves. I mean, do you regard yourselves as sort of role models, symbols for that community to try and re-engage them? I definitely see it that way um, because... I, I always think, and that's why I try to, uh, it doesn't matter what level of cricket I'm playing, uh, because I'll, I'm always of the opinion that you never know who's watching. Uh, and if, like, say, for instance, there might be a kid that I've never met, never heard of, but he looks at me on TV and thinks that he wants to do the things I'm doing and he wants to be like me someday. So that's why I just try to give a, a decent account of myself and... Uh, no matter what level of cricket, it can be club cricket, it can be international cricket, try to keep that level consistent. Um, and if uh, and if and if it is even just one kid, two kids, how many of it doesn't have to be a big number, but if they look and see me on TV doing what I, I love and performing and think for that reason alone, they want to do the same, I'm more than happy with that. Well, I think you'll find that a lot of people will want to do what you're doing because you look as if you enjoy it. You know, you have you give off so much enthusiasm and just you look as if you're having fun. You look as if you're excited really most of the time. So that's that's as compelling as anything, really. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, like at the end of the day, I'm, I always like try to take that moment to think, right, you're so fortunate to be doing what I'm doing and it's literally a dream, a dream come true. And sometimes you find yourself getting caught up in the moment because you either have played and maybe have a few scars and stuff like that, but you always have to bring it back to the present and think, you know what, like I'm actually doing what I love and doing what I want to do um, and having some fun with it. So you quickly sort of forget about that and, and just keep keep it moving, keep moving on to the next one. Well, thanks for the enthusiasm that you, you give off as much as the skill and athleticism as well. Very good luck. We'll be watching. And, uh, and particularly good luck tomorrow. 
um, it'd be a, a fascinating final game. Great weather, great two teams, beautifully set up. Yeah, definitely. You've got, you've got a lot of interesting cricket coming up, so good luck yeah, with it. And hey, by the time. way, by the way, by the way, Nort's here, Simon yes. and Chris. By the way, this thing we unraveled today that um, Pakistan have not won a limited overs uh, tournament in England against England since 1974. Oh. Okay. Thank, actually, yeah, thanks whoa. for telling me that. There's I'm a little bit saying, of extra motivation. Bit of there. There. Yeah, thanks for telling me that. <laughs> we'll, try, we'll try and keep that record going. <laughs> Definitely keep that record going. No worries. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. CJ, thank That's... you very much for your time. Great to chat. No worries. Good luck tomorrow and, and for yeah. the rest. Cheers. Cheers, guys. See thank you. See you. Um, let's just do one more thing um, before we finish. Um, in We've got five minutes, right? What I thought we'd do, um, Norts, if this is all right, yeah. is I want anyone who uh, can keep their explanation to say 30 seconds I want as many people as possible to just come on here and tell me or us what they think of the hundred right so we take it in turns I just want just your honest view and I don't want a long spiel and we're not gonna um we're not gonna like have an argument about it I just want you to give us your 20 30 second um, view and I'll put them together in the podcast so what I want you to do is say your name first say your name where you're from and what you think of the hundred is that all right and also also what I'll just say just to help me put people it'll be people who have their cameras on because then I know that they're going to do it is that see what I'm saying there that makes sense doesn't it right so it, I'm going to say if you've got your camera on you're going to give an opinion so just right? remember fair name, enough town or city or whatever and then give us your 20 seconds you know it doesn't matter if you stumble through it just give it a go okay right are you ready yeah so let's bring on number one it's you got me perfect uh i'm jack i'm from london i think the hundred is a good idea i'm really really excited about it because the way that cricket was and is if it just carries on like it is, then it will not survive the new media age. And I think it's really innovative. I think it's going to be really exciting. It will have teething problems, but we've got to hope that the 100 lasts an awfully long time. And in 10, 15 years, it will look different to what it does on Wednesday and Thursday. But I think that's only a good thing because games evolve and games change. And I think it's just simply going to complement all the other great cricket that fans can enjoy. Very well said. You've, you've practised that before. Anyway, thank you. Very good. Right. Next. <laughs> Who's next? Right. I'm just working my way through it. Just working my way through it. Taking that. I'm going to bring on Alex Gaywood next, actually. I haven't seen him for a while, but let's let's bring him on. His camera's on. I've been here. Don't worry. Sorry. So I'm Alex Gaywood. I'm from... Well, I'm living in Huddersfield. In my opinion, I understand why the ECB wants to have this big, extravagant tournament with all the big names and all the big stars to bring in the new fans. I'm not convinced by the slight tweaks to the game and why they've got such a small differentiation between T20 and the 100 and why that has to happen. But at the same time, I'm going to try and be open-minded. I'll definitely watch the first game and judge it how it goes from there. OK, so reasonably open-minded from Alex, although you know, starting from a slightly negative viewpoint. Fair enough. OK, good. Fair enough, Excellent. Fair enough. Right, I'm going to bring uh, I'm bringing Mark on next. Mark? He's going to bring a bit of Welsh fire. <laughs> yes, I'm really looking forward to the 100. I think cricket needs something to move ahead. Oh, I'm going to have to stop you there, Mark. You've got to go. You've got to I'm say Mark your name from... first. And oh, where sorry. are you from? I'm, I'm, Mark, I'm Mark Lewis yeah. from Carmarthen, West Wales. Um, I'm really looking forward to the 100, I'll be honest. I've been looking forward to it since last year. Um, I think it's a new way of looking at cricket. Cricket needs something to, some injection, I think, especially in Wales, I believe. And it's nice to see some big stars coming to Cardiff and get the occasional one coming to Sapphire Gardens. But it's something fresh and something new. I think more kids will be involved as well. And I need something. And I think it'll be a good thing. Fingers crossed. Anyway. Very, very well spoken. Excellent, Mark. Thank you. Right. right. Let's go with let's uh, have two or three more then. Well, I had Paul, Paul Morley I was going to bring on, but he's turned his camera off there. Uh, no, he's back he's on again. He's getting back shy. on again. Getting shy. No, he's back on again. He, he, he went to get a snack. Yeah, sorry, I had a technical issue. Right, so um, you know what he did, Paul. Paul. Hang on, I ain't got you on screen yet. 
Sorry, mate. Sorry. Go. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm Paul. I'm from Hampton, Southwest London. I am cautiously optimistic about the hundred. Um, I am excited. I'm looking forward to going. I'm going on Sunday uh, to watch London Spirit versus Oval Invincible. So keen to to sense the atmosphere and see what it's all about. Um, I think the only message I would have for anyone out there who's who's sceptical is I think innovation is important. Um, I think anyone who is who is sceptical, please don't will it to fail. I think those of us who are excited by it, similarly don't be um, blind to its failings. So um, the jury's still out to a degree, but I hope, it, I hope it's successful. Okay, very good. Okay, Obviously now, uh, uh, no, I'll just say, so Tim, Any we more? know you that Tim's gonna, he got three more actually, he got Tim three, three. more, right, good. And don't worry, Tim, I'll unmute you. But before that, I'm bringing, I'm bringing Pushkar in, actually. Hey, Pushkar. So, so I'm bringing him in and I'm putting him on screen and yeah. I'm getting into a mute. Yeah, hi. Good evening, all. Hi, Pushkar. Yeah. So basically, I'm looking for the Manchester Originals. Oh, I'm going to have to start again, Pushkar, because you've got to go. say your name, where you're from. I'm yeah. Pushkar, where I'm from. So, yeah, hi. I'm Pushkar. I'm from India. So I'm quite excited because it's a new format. So it's I'm just looking at this as a new form of experiment. And see how it unfolds because when IPL started in 2008, many people also were, were has some negative shades about IPL how it will go. But I like all form of game, whether it's a test cricket or a ODI or a T20 or 100. Particularly, I'm like for the Manchester original because Josh Butler and Herman Pete Paul is there. So I would like to see them go the Manchester originals. Good well, support from afar. Very good. Ports from afar. Right, I'm going to bring in Timothy. So if I press that button there, Timothy, that's going to ask you to unmute. Hopefully that's working. Oh, he's there. He's very yeah. low. He's very low in the picture. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Where the hell are you? On top of screen. You can see. Hey. Right, there you go. Whoops, hang on. Uh, the host would like you to unmute. You know what? You know you are unmuted. No, you are unmuted. You've muted yourself now. Oh, right. Yeah, you're right now. You're good now. You're good. So you got to say okay, name, you where now, you're from, you? name, where you're from, what you think. Right, OK. I'm Tim Percival from Chelmsford. Um, yeah, I, the one thing I'm sceptical about of this um, new 100 tournament is how many spectators they're going to get in the ground. There's, they're promising full ground. I, I, I don't actually believe it because uh, this thing is allegedly a new audience and I can't see where there's where this new audience is going to come from but i'm certainly going to have a look at it on the television and see see how it see how it goes i'm, I'm looking forward to watching it on television anyway so okay so if you're convinced then you might be one of that new audience okay good fine excellent right, so right. last 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 and last, last and not least and not, oh by the way alex asked what was the name of the cat we briefly saw on screen um, boris oh dear <laughs> Less oh, yeah, so. Here he is, look. He's there, look. He's there now. Horace. The less, the less said, the better. He's looking <laughs> very suspiciously at anyone who's on this show. Right, so I just got to bring Rob. I've got to find him. And then with, I think Rob's last hit for a view. You ready, Rob? Bringing you on. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob. Rob. From Fairlight. Sorry, Hi. start again. I interrupted you. Oh, amateurs. Hi, um, I'm Rob from Fairlight. I'm 50-50 on the 100. I'm a bit worried about the impact if COVID hits and they've got to redraft players in and it lessens the one-day cup. Um, maybe it could have been postponed another year to get more influx of the overseas that were originally there, but I think it will be good to see how it works and hopefully next year they'll have the more input from overseas especially from the female side because there's no australians over and you know that would have a big impact on the on the hundred for the ladies okay good that's well that's a good point actually that you know covid is sort of rather inhibited it all and noughts do you want to do you want to give us your two yeah 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 i'll go, go on, on then it's as ever it's going to be completely isn't it uh 
flippant and derogatory or no, 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 don't, no, don't no, be no. flippant. Or no, no, I'm, tell you what, no I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say, right? Hi, my name's uh, Norts. I'm from Western Supermare. I am totally looking forward to the 100. I love the fact that the women's game is getting the equality with the men's about time too. But more than anything, I'm looking forward to that day. I think it's July the 29th when Owen Morgan comes face to face with Alex Hales. Oh, to be listening to that stunt camera, eh? Oh, to be listening to it. <laughs> Excellent. And you're and and you must be the only person in Somerset who's actually pro the hundred. Uh, yeah, I was a bit disappointed when they kind of they was the, the teams were spinning out, and obviously with the sort of Gloucester Somerset kind of, uh, you could have sort of seen it. I suppose if you're in that, that sort of way, they want you to lean towards like whether you go down to Southampton or you go to to Welsh Fire, but. Me and daughter, we checked out going to see a Welsh Fire game, but all the tickets all sold out. So, you know, there's a sign of what's to come. But uh, personally, I feel I find myself <laughs> leaning towards the Southern Braves without any kind of yeah, for, no, yeah, for no particular yeah. reason. They, they look do, pretty good, don't they? Yeah, Trent Rockets look pretty good as well, to be honest. That's a pretty big Right, well, um, anyway, that was a really interesting little exercise. You will all be on the podcast tomorrow, your views. Uh, so listen out for that. We'll cut them together. No editing, I promise. And actually, uh, it's interesting. There's just a slight sort of st uh, steer towards positivity compared to what I hear generally, uh, especially from the Cricketer magazine, there's a lot of negativity. So, um, you know, I'm reasonably optimistic about it. I mean, it has been hampered by so many things. And one journalist has renamed it The Hindered rather than The Hundred. But uh, I think it will be interesting, actually. I think it will throw up lots of quite interesting stuff and a new kind of coverage and um you know great opportunity for the game so uh, fingers crossed i do think it's a shame they're not playing county championship cricket at the same time but maybe they will next year so that's it for today um and I, i'm just going to say thank you again for for your attendance um i'm not sure quite of what the next show is going to be because i think that we are um we're you know definitely going to be in a sort of cricket every night kind of mode boris also has exited the building now so it's clearly time to shut up shop. Um, uh, so I'm going to say goodbye. And what we're going to do in the, in the next few weeks is we will do some more live shows. Just keep your uh, um, you know, sort of diary, uh, well, you'll keep aware. I will obviously publicise them. When it comes to the test series in August, we're doing a live show every night. So you'll all be invited to that. Um, but for the next couple of weeks, I think the 100 will probably take precedence. So we might do a show at the end of July. I'm not sure exactly when, but certainly in August, there will be a live show every night that you can attend if you want to. Uh, and then probably in September, we'll get back to doing the one-on-one -on -one interviews again, just to sort of give you some, some warning for that. So, you know, just for the moment, it's slightly going to change tack, but please keep supporting us. We'll do some announcements about the Professional Cricketers Trust and I'll officially uh, hand over them some more money shortly. There's also going to be an event in August with them. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And um, just to say, you know, thanks for all your uh, support. And please keep supporting because we are going to sort of change tack a little bit for a, say a month. But we'll be back with these live shows at the end of August, September. Uh, and please attend the live shows we do from the test matches as well. So thanks a lot for tonight. Listen out for the podcast tomorrow. Um, you'll all be on it. And good night.